Sorry, Jess. First off. Yeah, the Nats aren't doing that great. I'm joking. No, 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 no. Like, let, let, let's start with Ron Rivera, right? Oh, so, yeah, dude. Brutal. Yeah, like, I'm praying for him because uh, my pops beat cancer twice. So I, kn I know that shit is tough. Like, I don't know personally, but family-wise, like, my my pops, like, the shit's going to be tough. Yeah. I mean, but luckily, it is it is the most treatable of the yeah. skin cancer. So, yeah. I mean, he just needs – he's down there, you know, riverboat running with no sunscreen on, no hat. Yeah. I want, I want, him, to, I want him to beat the shit out of his cancer day. Yes. Yeah. Um, Same here. So, um, my wishes are with you, Ron. So, um yeah, I heard that the the next man up is your boy. Well, your boy. No, he's not. Everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite tweeter. Nah, Co Coach that... Jack Del Rio. Hey, he number he number two. <laughs> Look, as I've said um, numerous times, I don't know if on the podcast I've said. Yeah, I've said it at least once on the. Podcast. <laughs> Your voice went so high pitched, you gave feedback into the microphone just now. <laughs> I don't care. I don't it's like care. Like the only person that was able to hear and make out what just happened to the dogs. Too I don't. I don't care. <laughs> but overall, is just looking at the situation itself. When you see something like this happen to Ron Rivera after what he's doing with this entire team, it sucks because it always feels like no matter how much progress you make, there's always something to come back and to kill us. And it like. While I think that Ron has a really good chance of beating this, is always in the back of my head. The last time we had, we had a coach to need to come in and completely wholesale change the culture was Vince Lombardi, and everybody kind of knows how that ended up. Um, but so that kind of scares me, at least just as a Skins fan historically. But Jack Del Rio being the plan B, if I'm being completely honest, other than me not liking or appreciating Jack Del Rio's tweets or basically anything that he believes, what I do know is a motherfucking good coach, and he can especially coach defense. And if there's anybody that is able to come in and step in, especially if you have a coach having a health care or anything, he's already done that when it came to Denver and what happened with John Fox. So it's like That's if true. there's anyone that could have – so it's like it, when you look at these situations, like I look at a Ron Rivera who already knows what it's like to come in when you have a problematic owner doing stupid shit. He has that now with Dan Snyder and the controversy he's done and what he's doing as far as turning the ship here. Um, oh, okay. I see what you're yeah. saying. Um, and now you have another guy, which he's been in a similar situation too. So it's not anything that surprises them, which is, I think has been the biggest thing that I've noticed as far as this coaching staff is just how comfortable they're with making certain decisions because they faced a lot of these shit before. Like there is no scrambling around trying to figure it out. There's, no, this is just what we're going to do. And yeah. it's just, they, they, and they, you can always see that they stand so firm in it. Like we talked about last week with them getting rid of Darius Geis. They just cut Cody Lattimore today, who was yeah. having some of the Really? Mm -hmm. They're not fucking around. You look at all the rest of these. Then you look at even the Reuben Foster. Reuben Foster, I don't know if you guys heard the interview, where he's praising the shit out of his coaching staff, but being like, look, I understand that I need to do something different. I needed to be a better person. And these guys are trusting me to do that. And everybody that said it is, um, you got like Ron Anderson and a lot of the guys on the defense saying, if Ruben Foster plays when he's on the field, he is the best player we've ever seen. So it's like, this is what some of the, this is what, these are what these guys are saying that they're, what they're hearing at training camp. I've just never heard that kind of, like you can give it, I don't think that's Ruben bullshit Foster, though. I don't like, think Ruben Foster is the best player in the history of the league. All right, thank but you. I, Nobody's really believing that, but I'm saying that that's what I'm saying. But here's what I will say okay. when Ruben Foster was playing really good in San Francisco, mm -hmm. there were few players in that position that were better than him when he was really going all out. But the only thing was, it was a very, very short window of what we saw, and you also knew that he had a whole hell of a lot more to learn. Not to mention, San Francisco over the course of how many of those years, we're seeing a lot of turnover as far as coordinators and coaches go. So um, if given the yeah. opportunity with a guy like Jack Del Rio, who gets the best out of his players, you got a guy like Ron Rivera, who gets the best out of his players, especially when it comes to character, the marriage of all those things together to me gives me more faith in this franchise. And I think I've ever, I'm not that I've ever had, I had a lot of faith when Joe Gibbs came back um, until you start realizing that he had the exact same playbook in 1983, <laughs> but it was like, you, you start seeing some of the pieces <laughs> move and it's just, as much as I hate a lot of things with this franchise, 
you can honestly look at every single aspect of things that they've been problematic or wrong about and saying they're addressing it. And, and I, I think if you've seen what Coach Rivera's been able to do, even during COVID, when it's obviously ha- like he's been hands on but distant, if he does need to take some time to step away for treatment, he's still going to be a presence for the team. He's still going to be making the big decisions. Even if Del Rio is the one tweeting from the Washington football team account, um, you're still going to – Rivera is still going to be there. Here's, like what, you also, here's what you also got to realize. be there even you if he's in that gym. There. Fuck you in that gym. <laughs> if you – but here's the thing. Also along the lines of what we're talking about when it comes to changes, the head of the Washington football team social media is a black woman. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, yeah. And outside of that, you first the person in charge of all their media stuff is another woman, Julie Donaldson. Love her. There's a you and look they at this the team. first black president. Thank you. Which we didn't talk about. We yeah we uh, we didn't talk about it last week because it just nope. happened. They they hired a young black team president, and yeah, he Re- did. Rivera's did you not see playing the, around. Did you see the interview he did? Which is yeah. um uh, what was what was the line he said that uh like um. Look, I totally understand if you have somebody that has played in the league, has an MBA from a top school, and I beat them out because I'm black. I mean, I guess so. I guess I'm sorry about that. But it's like there's nobody that was more high qualified or qualified for the gig than right. him. He got the job, and he just so happens to be – he's 30-something years old, black dude. The, like, that is change. That, that I'm looking at every facet, and I'm saying change. Ron, I've been paying a yeah. lot of attention to what's happening in training right. camp. Hold oh on. my God! Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta give I gotta give the Washington Football Team their props. I've given you a lot of shit over the years because you've given me a lot of shit. But as of right now, like deserve the shit it. Y'all you guys doing, call your goddamn stadium the Death Star and don't realize yeah. it blows up in every movie. Fuck you! It don't matter. <laughs> literally, literally every movie. <laughs> it, don't, <laughs> it, it don't matter. Even the, the new ones they built a great. better Death Star. Like it makes the shit sounds great. <laughs> See, like, I'm trying to give you props, and then here you come. You see Mark yeah. Davis gave like, his little, he gave his my speech. fucking props, he gave his looking like fucking General Hux from fucking the new Star Wars right. movies. In you, front. See, you see, <laughs> like, you see. You know you're going to die, right? You're the curse of the Redskins right there. Like, oh, we don't but, use that word anymore. But, yeah, 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 fuck you. you. Okay. But what, what the Redskins have, or sorry, the Washington football team. WFC, it's easier for me to say it than you see? guys at this point. I don't even yeah. say the R word anymore. Um, what's, what's the best part about that is? is when you start putting people of color in high-ranking positions within any company or, in this, in this instance, with the team, that's how you get more people of color way at the top. Mm-hmm. It's because mm-hmm. it, you, it, it doesn't always start at the top. Sometimes it starts with infusions, you know, in high positions within the team. And then what happens is the people who work there and other teams and other companies – see that, see that it's working, see that you're getting good press from it, and then it starts happening everywhere. So props and, to and then And then hopefully we'll get to the point where no matter what you look like or anything in regards to you as a person, you are hired because you're the best qualified person. Yep. And that's what I'm seeing is that the Washington football team is not only doing – they're doing both. They're making sure that the candidates they look at – Mm-hmm. Or kind of sort of, but they're not doing. There is no charity case that There's is no happening ne- it's here. It's not. It's mostly. It's yeah. almost like nepotism, where if you think about football as a family, like historically, the coaches have all been white. So if you're going to pick up a new coach, it's going to be this other guy who got fired, and then right. we're yeah. going to pick him up because he's he's in our family, and he, but he's a white person. Right. Not, 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 to, not not the not the black officer coordinator who's running right. the, exactly. the, the best offense in the league at this point. Right. Yes, yeah, San, okay. Santana Moss, I think, is having a bigger impact as far as what it is the, the Washington football team does as far as from a media perspective. I love everything I'm hearing coming out of that part. Every once in a while, what I feel is – and here's the thing. Even as a fan, I'm guilty of wanting them to do things that are bad. Like, I'm like – I look at our wide receiver core, and I'm like, why aren't we calling Josh Gordon? Why aren't we calling Antonio Brown? And they're like well, – hold, well, hold on, hold on. Hold on, bad. Like, Josh sorry, Gordon, not bad. I was like, come on. Not bad, sorry, not bad. But right. as far as anything being that it'd be a distraction or being problematic in any way, shape, or form, even if I don't agree that Josh Gordon in any way, shape, or form is problematic, there is an aura, regardless of whether or not you think positive or negative about it's it. It's kind of like, but Homeboy Homeboy enjoys CBD. No, Homeboy he enjoys, enjoys THC. THC. And, he was, and he enjoyed it so much he was willing to risk his career for it. Like, that, that to me is not about – 
it's not a Ricky Williams sort of situation. It is Josh Gordon literally like kind of having a problem yeah. up here as far but, as that goes. I remember it's, 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 weighing it's, 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 weighing what's important to him and had, football is not important. Not but didn't he say that he was like introduced to, to marijuana like as like a youngin? Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he so, I mean, grew like, up in a tough environment. That's what I'm saying. So it's kind of like we all. I mean, I know I was introduced to marijuana as a very young kid, but I also so knew that I. if I was going to, if I wanted a particular job and I needed to pass a piss test, I wasn't going to smoke for a while. Like I, I could. That's prioritize. why I became a lawyer. No drug testing. Well, <laughs> but I also one last thing on the Washington football team, as far as uh, what I've seen coming out of training camp, is the exact opposite of what Jay Gruden has done. And you're seeing sometimes with the players, it's kind of they're getting into it. It's getting hard for them. This isn't Camp Jay. Ron has been screaming at these dudes during practice and making shit happen. They said that, like, they had a fairly good practice yesterday. And near the end, the, he saw some guys kind of letting off or whatever, and he got in their asses. Well, well, like, how, the hell, how the fuck do you expect us to finish games if you can't finish a goddamn three-hour practice. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what he was saying was that in, in, his, uh, in his statement about him having the cancer diagnosis, he said, look, I might be a little more angry, but I think it might help us. <laughs> like, it's just, but yeah, he's like, I'm going to be cranky here. But I'm just I, I, want, I want to call back, right, because you were talking about how Ron Rivera was angry because he saw um, the team lighten up a little bit at mm -hmm. the end of practice. That is what I hear is what Brett Brown doesn't do. He doesn't hold people accountable. Yeah. I mean, so I don't that's, see – That's I don't the think big difference that I Brett see. Brown no, is a.k.a. Not Jimmy have a Butler's job. entire problem with the Philadelphia organization. Like, yeah. that was what it was. It was like, yeah. how am I going to come in and here that, for this thing and nobody – and then why is everybody so completely complacent and not trying to call anybody out on doing mm -hmm. something different? I can't That was the that. problem before Barry Trotz was with the Caps. The, even the players would say, like, they didn't practice. Like, Ovi didn't really practice. Baxter didn't really practice. They were just on the ice because the coaching staff was like, they're good enough that if you put them in the game, they're going to be fine. No, that's not how it works. You become championship caliber when yeah. everybody's going 100% in practice because you play in the game like you practice. If and that's, lazy and that's that culture change. That's why the Patriots are so good. Right. And there's a balance, though. There's like, there's, you have guys that think that, all right, well, if we're just strict for the sake of being strict, then it'll bring wins. That's why you got guys like Mike Singletary flame out as far as coaching. That's why you guys like, like Tom Coughlin, even though he got results, used to have to try to, the only, every time that they won a championship was when Tom Coughlin had to sit down and say, ease up a little bit. Like it was always, if you're, if you're too much of a hard ass, you're for the sake of being a hard ass, you're not going to win. Right. But there is a balance between holding yourselves and the guy next to you accountable to doing what's needed to win these games. Yeah. And it's across any sport. I mean, it's across any job. If you have a manager in any position, in any profession you have, if they just let everything go and slide, you're not going to perform well. I don't care where right. you are. Yeah, because, it, because there's no accountability. That's why the Kobe's were so good. That's why the Michael Jordans were so good. That's why their teams were so good, because they pushed their other, their teammates to work as hard as they do, which sometimes was ridiculous. And they didn't care about being liked. No, and you don't, you there's a difference between being being liked and being good. Like, there's different qualities. Like, mm -hmm. if you're – the reason that people didn't like Kobe while he was playing is because he was an asshole. But he was an asshole that produced. So now if we look back at his career, if you weren't a Kobe fan, you can see he was an asshole because he wanted to get results. It wasn't because he's a bad person. You can see with what he did with his, <coughs> with his daughters, everything else. Great guy but not on the court because he wanted yeah. to fucking win. And he's yeah. going to make sure that you're not the reason he's not going to win. Especially when he's putting in the work. The yes. And you see and a lot I of can respect he's that. waking up at 2.30 and, like, going to the gym. And then he sees you guys, like, in the club and shit like that. He's like, no, 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 no. But that, you that's where you also – you get into that line a lot when it comes to these guys that they consider, what, player coaches, which are, like, the, the guys that the players all love. Mm -hmm. But even with those guys, there is an accountability that happens. It just necessarily happens – is rah, 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 or angry in your face as it would be with other things. Like Mike Tomlin demands certain things from you. He's not yeah. going to yell at you to get it done, but he demands certain things. And there's almost this level of like, from what I understand from um, hearing a lot of what Pittsburgh Steelers guys will say, is you feel guilty. There's like, you, he doesn't need to yell at you. Like you feel guilty if you haven't brung everything you need to bring. Bill Belichick's not a yeller. No, but he'll, te he'll, he'll tell you that, like, if you Get let the him fuck off my field. Yeah. You, you don't deserve you'll, to be here. Get off my field. Me, he's like, you've hey, let me down. You're, you're in Cleveland now. Right. Yeah. You're gone. <laughs> and, and you try to we got, we got a second round pick for you. It's, right. the, it's, the, uh, it's the old parenting trick where I always felt way worse 
when my dad said he was disappointed in me rather than when he was yelling at me. Because the yelling, I'm just like, I don't, I, I'm not listening. But then you but have the like, player coaches. Weird. You have the player Very coaches like Jay Gruden that wants to go hang out with you and bang co-eds at the bar in Ashburn. Like that, that to me sounds awesome. But, but <laughs> it does Look not. At this, this step back. Ugh. It does not. Um, I mean, if I was Jay, that's what I would be doing. But it doesn't make for a good uh, work environment. Forget that it's sports. That doesn't yeah. work. That doesn't work anywhere. So, but that's uh, been the Washington's organization is complacency and just let's have fun day in and day out because like, we're all getting paid. And all this, all this nonsense or not nonsense. Take that back. All of these reports that came out about what's going, what was going on in the Washington at, uh, football team as a franchise. Mm -hmm. I I would not be surprised if a lot of that was simply because the team was so lax they weren't holding everybody accountable. That's exactly. And what that was. these things could happen without a lot of people knowing because they weren't keeping tabs on things that they should have been exactly so they you lose them. you lose sense of everything if you're not in the details with it like there's right. not there, there's you just gloss over it all and look I, I, one last thing on the washington football team the washington football team name being the washington football team is kind of growing on me i don't know <laughs> i don't i don't hate it luke luke is taking this game over yeah when doesn't he even though chris has some of my favorite plan all right, next. Fucking 